Kathleen, you're going to join us on our uh, next works tour to San Francisco in December. We're going to go to find out about the future of mobility. I'm very excited about the tour because I think that the future of mobility is going to change not only mobility as we know it, but the whole society as we know it. And um, uh, whole new business models will uh, business models will disappear and new business models will appear. Um, it's going to have a huge influence on how people live and how people commute, how people move from A to B. Um, so um, I wonder why you were interested to join us on that on that tour on that on that mm -hmm. tour. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, first of all, I think um, we politicians we hardly take the time um, to reflect. Yeah. Um, we're busy with um, uh, speeches, amendments, lawmaking, um, a lot of meetings and negotiations. But in these meetings and negotiations, we don't have the time to really open up our mind. Yeah. Um, uh, and when you ask me, first, you remember I said, unfortunately, I don't have the time. Yeah. Um, when I came back home, um, and it took me a while that I said, I thought, no, 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 no. I have to, I have to take some time. That means skip some meetings and join you. Um, and I, the, the main thing I will do there is um, listen, listen, and see, and see. Let, let it, let, let it, it come. Let it come. Yes. And let and yeah. And digestion long, is for Yeah, later. absolutely. Yeah. A long time ago, well, not so long, yeah. but in, in in life, and for me, a long time ago, um, I was a minister of transport um, mobility in in the region of Flanders in Belgium, um, uh, and at that time, it was impossible to think out of the box. Um, uh, at that time, I wanted to start thinking about road pricing, for instance, and everybody said, no, don't do that. It's too difficult. And the yeah. people in Flanders don't like that. Um, I think we're now at a crossroad in our societies. Um, everybody's facing all these problems of transport, whether it's the bad and, uh, air that we breathe, um, the CO2 problems that we have, but also the noise in the cities and, and, and the impact it has on our daily life. Yeah. Um, uh, and we all know we need to change um, and we need really new ideas to change um, and I want to be part of that. Okay, what, what I hear about you say is, in between the lines you say the public is ready for it. Yes. That there, is, there is a growing frustration with the situation as is, so the public is ready for this new world of mobility. And what you want to find out is how it's going to, how potentially how it is going to look so you can anticipate. Yeah. Um, you're no longer on the regional um, politic, uh, in, in regional politics, you're in the European, European uh, Parliament. Um, you've been very involved in, in, I think, one of the elements that really has been speeding up the change in mobility mm -hmm. in the European market. Can you tell us something about that? Well, as, as as people might remember, because yeah. it's not such a long time, um, uh, we had a huge scandal within the car industry um, uh, where the car industry, instead of taking up the laws that we have at European level, um, implementing them, making the car cleaner. You, you, uh, you gave them time, no? You yeah, a lot of time, yeah, a lot, lot of time. time and yeah. in, in my opinion, too much time, but okay, you can, we, let, we can have an argument on that. Um, but also, the ambition level was not too high. Eh? It was completely technologically feasible to get yeah. these cars cleaner. Um, uh, but instead of investing all their money in R&D in implementing that law, that yeah. European law, they did it completely the other way around. It's amazing. They took their money and their investments and their brains to cheat on the people and to cheat on the governments. Yeah. Um, uh, it's a diesel gate. Eh? Yeah. Um, it really yeah. went as a shock um, uh, in public opinion, uh, people felt betrayed and rightly so um, and in the European Parliament we took that up quite quickly. Um, uh, I've been the chair of the Dieselgate committee, the inquiry committee. I can tell you when we when we say that in, in San Francisco yeah. people open up their doors they say wow okay okay yeah. very good but yeah. well I'm, I'm looking forward to yeah. have these discussions because we always have the, the tendency to look to the United States um, a little bit, um, uh, let me say, arrogant in the sense we're much more envir environmentally friendly. We, and that, that's the case, eh? with Trump leaving the Paris Agreement, we yeah. take up uh, climate engagements. Yeah. Um, but it's not the full truth. Eh? In the States, there are also firm laws when it comes to clean cars, um, and they're much, much um, firmer in uh, implementing um, these laws than, yeah. than that we are in Europe because that's the problem. In Europe we have good 
ambitious laws on CO2 and, and we will we'll improve on that, um, uh, on clean air and things like that, but we do not implement that and we do not enforce them. Mm. Uh, and that was one of the um, conclusions we made. We need better laws, but we need also better enforcement yeah. um, uh, to make sure that we get a clean car for the future. Yeah. So, we're talking Dieselgate. Do you think that Dieselgate, when we are going to look back at Dieselgate, like in 10 years' time, that we say there was, a, uh, there was an area before uh, Dieselgate and Dieselgate changed it all? Mm, yes and no. Um, uh, uh, if you ask me, did it change um, the mentality in the car industry? Unfortunately, I would say. Um, it needs more time and some car industries are starting to change. Mm -hmm. um, but it goes much too slow and they took up the diesel gate scandal um, to invent all sorts of arguments and technologies um, uh, and, and measures um, to still... To slow it down. Slow, well, yeah. slow it down or yeah. still promote the diesel technology. There's yeah. a stupid belief in Europe yeah. that the diesel technology, since it's the European technology, um, if we don't keep up the diesel technology, we will lose the car industry. It's the other way around. The diesel technology is a technology of the past, and if the car industry doesn't immediately transform themselves into yeah. an electrified era, we will lose um, the car industry, uh, the car industry in Europe so, yeah. as such. Yeah. Um, and, and, oh. So it's a change in, in mindset with the people, yeah. with the public, the public and, and the automotive yeah. producers have to follow the public, have to follow that, that changing mindset. If they don't, they will be destroyed by companies that do so but they most probably will not come out of the European market and that's that's your fear Absolutely. yeah um, Absolutely. how do you think that a government or a European government can help in this transition well in the transition I believe there are three things extremely important yeah. the one is technology of course if the technology is not there to decarbonize if the te technology is not there to get a completely other um, uh, transport system in our cities for instance then we have a problem but I'm firmly believe that the technology is there and it's yeah. improving it's with renewable energy the same it, it's improving fast and that is one of the beautiful things of our societies um, and very important at that technological level um, you need strong governments because we all know that technology um, and research and development is driven also by governments, not alone. It goes hand in hand with uh, uh, the drivers in, 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 our corporate, yeah. in the corporate world. The second issue is the governance. Huh? Yeah. Um, without governance, there will be no trans transition or the transition will not be efficient enough um, or it will not solve the societal problems and that is extremely important um, and that's what we do as mainly at the European level that's why Euro European level is so extremely important because you cannot create CO2 um, regulation at, at the, uh, no it's impossible region region. no it's yeah. impossible yeah. we need the whole of Europe yeah. and that's what we do uh, um, for me it could be much more ambitious uh, but at least we all move in the same direction it's cutting on the CO2 it's getting cleaner cars um, uh, but also really push on the electrification in the sense that we really will push the industry to come up with electrified cars and yeah. if possible yeah accessible um, in the sense of also of, uh, yeah, affordable, affordable, affordable yeah, yeah. yeah and the third part is the most difficult part is the um, what I would call the cultural part yeah. um, uh, what we do how we live how we organize ourselves is um, uh, in, in the minds of people and the minds of our societies uh, um, I always tell the story of um, I have a wonderful picture at home um, of my father when he was 18, or maybe it's 21, you need to be 21 to drive a car. My father is a tall guy, so a tall, beautiful yeah. guy, and next to him, a um, very big, beautiful American car, it was an American car, it was his first car, he yeah. bought um, with his uh, first salaries, um, uh, and it's such a beautiful picture, um, because it, it says, this is my freedom, the car and the freedom. Uh, um, we all know, if we look to the facts and the figures and, and the problems in, in our societies, that that's no longer the case. The car is no longer our freedom. No, the car is no longer... Um, I mean, I travelled from Amsterdam to, to Brussels yesterday and it took me five hours. Voilà. It's no more freedom. No more I'm freedom. stuck in this voilà. car. This is my prison. Yeah, yeah. voilà. Yeah. This is your prison yeah. and at the same time, I know you have a clean car, so your car is not a problem, but all the cars in surrounding you in that traffic jam is, is killing you. Eh? Yeah. Um, so. So it's that, no more mobility. But that picture, yeah, yeah. we should change that completely. Yeah. Um, uh, and, and that's 
the mindset of people and the mindset of our societies. Um, and if we talk about climate policies, if we talk about um, transformation and, and transition, we need to take that much more yeah. into account. It's a sociological facts that we need to take much more into, into account. It's not only about technology and governance, but also about mindset yeah. and changing that. But if we, if we talk about electrification of, of, of vehicles, because it's no longer cars, it's vehicles, and electrification of all vehicles, and I know that you're very fond of electrical bikes and all other ways of transportation. Um, with um, electrification, we also get connected um, devices and we, we, will, yeah, we will see more and more autonomous vehicles as well. Um, and once autonomous vehicles come in, we are going to talk more and more about shared mobility instead of, of privately owned mobility. Um, do you believe in that trend as well? Yes, yeah. but maybe not as much as you do. Okay. Eh? Um, yeah. uh, but maybe San Francisco will change my, my, my mind. Um, I'm very, I'm, I'm, I'm open. I really want to learn more about that because it's, it's, um, it's something that um, hasn't convinced me fully yet. Yeah. Huh? Um, why is that the case? Um, uh, I think, first of all, shared um, mobility, absolutely. Yeah? Um, uh, the electrification of the car without the autonomous part of it, yeah. eh? Let's okay. the first, yeah. um, will automatically make sure that we will share the car because the, sh the car will be more expensive um, uh, but it will be more easy to, to share yeah. uh, um, uh, because of all the other um, uh, costs that goes with it um, and it's a trend that will is unstoppable yeah. uh, and it will create a whole other transport system in um, uh, in our cities mainly because then you can interconnect it's much more easy to take your 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 bicycle if you then later on can just tear yeah. your car so it's it, that's that goes without saying and then we need a good governance to to promote that um, i still don't see how the autonomous car can really add up to that i i see the examples that you often gi give eh, that, that it's mo more easy to, to, to transport from one city to another um, uh, uh, in that autonomous car. You can have a, a nap, you can, you can do your work. Um, um, but for me, it, it seems on the one hand, you're still in the traffic jams, so you do not solve any of that. Uh, you solve that when you take a train. Yeah. Um, uh, and, and second, it, for me, it sounds a little bit elite. Eh? And if I talk about transforming our transport system, it can be part of it. I'm not against it. Eh? It can be part of it, but... You're exactly at the point where I wanted you to go. That is, it, it includes other ways of transportation as well. It's not just the autonomous car that's going to be the solution of mobility. It is looking at the whole mobility ecosystem, yeah. which includes what we now still call public transport. And then I look back at governments, because public transport is not just country by country, because it's, it's, it's uh, when we're talking about it, it's, it's also how do you commute from uh, Brussels to Paris. So we're already talking about two countries. And I don't think we're going to travel from Brussels to Paris using our own privately owned car or a shared car, we will travel from Brussels to Paris using what we now still call public transport. But maybe the function and functionality of public transport needs to change as well. Yeah, let's think about that. Um, uh, but Paris, Brussels is a good example of how it can work ex excellent. Yes. Eh? Um, I'm, I'm faster in, in Paris uh, by train oh, yeah, than, than by plane. Than by when I take my car to go to Ostende, yeah. for yeah. instance. So yeah. um, uh, it's a very good example. But I, but I, I, I feel what you say. Um, uh, I, have, I, I think uh, mainly politicians today, the, the two trends, um, the, the first is really uh, devastating in the sense the last couple of years in all of Europe, um, uh, there's been disinvestment in, in public transport. Yeah. Um, uh, and, and the good reasons are there, yeah, there was austerity policy, we had to cut on these things, but um, investing in the future um, is also um, taking care of your budget. Uh, it's, it's very difficult to explain, but I, I truly believe that. Uh, um, if you see the effects on our um, social security, on the health of people, investing in public transport always pays back, yeah. always pays back. Uh, um, uh, and, and the second trend is that, um, uh, and that is a conservative reflex, um, also within um, uh, a lot of social democratic parties, eh, is there, there's no ability to talk about uh, or to, to talk open about how should the public transport of the future look like. Eh? Um, uh, public-private um, uh, partnerships in there, it's very difficult to talk about that. So I, 
I, there I want to open my mind. But I will stay a very strong believer of public transport. It's, it's something that I, I consider as being in the core of the solutions that we need. And then autonomous driving can add up to that. Um, um, uh, Uber, in, when it's social, when we can change Uber in a social acceptable way and make sure that the people who work for Uber are well paid, um, uh, well protected. I know you're going to visit Uber. Yeah, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. To yes, I'm looking them, forward yeah. to it. Um, then I don't. I, I, I see a lot of opportunities yeah. um, in that, and maybe. Um, By the way, we're also going to visit Lyft. And you will see Uber and Lyft is more or less the same, or it looks like the same yeah. business model. The mindset of the two companies is completely different, mm -hmm. um, and. You, you can feel that the very moment you enter the company, you feel like one company has a totally different feeling than the other company. They're coming up with the same type of solution, but they do it in a completely other way. Um, and it will be interesting to talk both to Uber and to Lyft. Lyft is far more like um, we go to a city, we'll go to a government, and we, together with the city or the government, we're going to look at how can we optimize mobility. And the taxi business, we should no longer call it taxi business, but the taxi business is, is only part of that. Yeah. They, they're looking for what is the, the optimum solution for a city, and I love that attitude. No, no, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And for I them it the includes transport, yeah. public transport. Yeah. Well, yeah. For me it's part yeah. of yeah. public transport. Yeah. Then we agree. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we, we, agree we do yeah. agree, yeah. 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 Okay. Um, then um, th there's we, we will, there will be a lot of, of business people joining us as well. And I think that business people are important in that transition as well, because as a government you can come up with whatever solutions if it doesn't lead to developing new business models, um, it doesn't stand a chance. If, if, if business people don't see money in it, don't see business models in it, then it will never develop. Um, do you agree with that? Yeah, absolutely, I do. Um, uh, I, 10, 15 years ago when I started um, as a politician working on climate issues, um, on environmental issues, um, clean air, um, I was always in opposition of um, uh, the corporate world and, yeah. and, and, and the CEOs and um, they always came to lobby me saying, you're far more too ambitious, um, you cannot do that and it was a sort of that completely changed and um, it's one of the things that makes me really positive about the future. Um, not all companies, not all sectors, eh? so there's still difficulties, um, but I now have more allies there than I often have in other, in other you parts see the of same, society. You see the same in the States for the yeah. moment, yeah. The, 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 the business leaders that lead the, the climate change, that lead the, no, the change into new mobility, yeah. absolutely. And, and, and we can um, enforce um, each other um, because often they come up with solutions. Governments and politicians cannot uh, um, uh, because we're not, uh, we're politicians, eh? we're, we're generalists. We, we, yeah. we, and they come up with solutions and then one can pick that up um, and, and, and make that um, uh, or, or enforce that in lawmaking or um, uh, by uh, subsidizing um, uh, things that can enlarge. So, absolutely agree. That's one of the reasons I go um, along in San Francisco and I'm, I'm, I'm really yeah. looking forward to um, not just the formal part but also the informal part where I can have the time to discuss. Yeah, that's what I love most about this, this, this tour and about San Francisco is that yeah it is about climate, it's about the planet, it's about people but it's also about profit. Um, what we see is like tens, dozens, hundreds of new business models that are into new mobility, that are into shared mobility, that are into electrification, that are into um, care for planet. Um, and that's what I love because once, once you, there is a business model, you know, people are going to, to try to explore the business model and then by doing that, if, if by doing that you save the planet and you, you, you care for people, then it is going to happen. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, I come back to what you said that as a politician you are so into your daily business that you tend to spend no time in looking into the day after tomorrow. Um, do you think that's also necessary for business people? Oh yes. Maybe next time I should organize. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let's talk about that. Yeah. 
a trip um, uh, and, and, and start talking because it's very important that uh, business people understand how politics work, yeah. how we can change that mutually, um, uh, but also strongly believe in strong governments and strong organization and strong administration. And often in, you see also a, um, a fight there. Uh, um, business people um, with their umbrella organization often will say, too much money is going into administration. Uh, too yeah. many people are working for the government. Um, although I think it's always interesting to see where you can make efficiency exercises. Yeah. I don't have a problem with that. But we need absolutely strong governments. Um, and strong governments and strong administration with independent expertise is so important also for a good business of the future. If one of the problems in Dieselgate was not only the fact that they cheated on us, but also the, the fact that um, at the European and the national level, we didn't have the people and the expertise to find that out. The, most people, well, hardly any people um, uh, understand how an engine works. Well, yeah. a simple uh, engine, of course, yeah, but yeah. all the software today, yeah. and, and don't ask me because <laughs> I'm a sociologist, so, uh, but, but that's, that's also... So there was broken trust, but also lack of transparency. Absolutely. Nobody was really capable of... of and, a, yeah. and, and, a, and a form of maladministration. Yeah. Um, uh, and to have good administration, you need strong administration. Absolutely, and, 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 and it's important that, that we can convince also uh, business world that a strong administration um, is helpful to combine strong economies, but also sustainability. I think when, when we come back from San Francisco, you, would, you will have seen those new business models. I think one of the challenges will be how do we create a context um, as a government, uh, how do we create a context in which those new business models can develop? I think that we need to change a couple of laws, that we need to, to change a couple of, of uh, contextual elements. Infrastructure, I mean, the very moment we're going to talk about new ways of, of, of public transport and autonomous cars, that will have a huge inf influence on, on, not an influence, we need to change the, the infrastructure of our roads, of our cities, of, of um, and we will need to, to change a couple of, of rules before it's too late. Yeah. Um, so I think that this is no, one of the, the biggest challenges. Certainly, and, 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 and I'm quite sure that the next um, decades will be extremely important whether or not Europe is capable of um, plugging in, uh, but also not just plugging in, because that means that you just follow the transition. Creating and transforming or, or making the transition is also yeah. very important because then I. I, 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 um, I, I also express myself as a social democrat. Uh, um, it's completely possible to change your, tra your transportation system so that most of the people that, that have good incomes and work and whatever can, can, can have a better transport system. But for me, it's extremely important that... We that it's accessible for everybody. For everybody. Uh, um, uh, because otherwise, first of all, you will lose a lot of support for these transformations and you as a politician, you have to work with uh, support, public support. Yep. Um, uh, but secondly, um, it's another subject, but it's so much interconnected. Um, uh, also, our labor market will radically change. Uh, um, a lot of people are a lot afraid of that, and I can understand that. How will my job of the future look like? How will the jobs of my children look like? Uh, and the transport system is part of that. Uh, yep. How can you make sure that people can easily and accessible and affordable um, uh, uh, move uh, to other places to work to change um, so these things are very much interconnected and as a social democrat it's very important for me um, to not just plug into the, uh, the transition but make the transition also from that point of view yeah. but you touched upon another important element i think that is the future of automotive is going to influence whole society i'm writing a blog for the moment and I've already defined over 25 businesses that are going to be hugely affected by new mobility. And that is going to change jobs, it's going to be to change a whole lot of elements in, in society. Yeah. Yeah. The society as yeah. a whole. Um, and, uh, and we need to, pre 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 sorry, we need yeah. to be prepared for that. Um, and, and that maybe is one of the, um, the most um, struct the, 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 the structural problem of our democracy is, of course, that uh, how can we make sure that we still have um, political parties and politicians that yeah. 
take that longer perspective. Um, I'm always, I'm not, I'm not looking with uh, envy to China. I don't never want to be no, China. We're not going no, to China. No, we're not the, going the, to China. The biggest, biggest no. threat comes out of China. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. But, but, but let's not be afraid. That's, no, no, that's not, not be what afraid. I want to do. No, yeah. no, no. Yeah. But um, it's often given yeah. as an example. Yeah. Eh? Um, it's not only China. I've been to Singapore a yeah. while ago. Um, and, and in Singapore, they just take up their port and just I know, yeah. put it on another spot, you yeah. think. Uh, if, if we yeah. cannot even build a bridge, so yeah. Yeah, time, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but it's it's uh, I, I I cherish um, our democracy and and, and uh, um, we should promote our democracies much yeah. more. Uh, but we also need to find ways. How can we within that democracy? Um, how can uh, we speed it up? Yeah, and how yeah. how can so we speed it up? Yeah. But how how can we also um, take into account the longer the longer term visions? Uh, yeah. That is often a, a, a yeah. Don't overestimate the longer term. Um, I went to San Francisco last year with a group of people that are busy in the automotive, and everybody thought, yeah, we know it's going to happen, but we think it's going to be 2050 or 2070 even. When you're there, you realize it's not going to happen in the future. It's happening right here, right now. Um, and that but if I say long term, yeah. if I say long term, I mean 2030. Okay. Yeah. Um, that's maybe a politician speaking. <laughs> um, uh, I would be so glad yeah. if we were ready by 2030. Voila, voila, yes. voila. And, yeah. and, and uh, I think that that is now um, that is the challenge um, to to change that our society in the decarbonization, in the transport system, in the energy system by 2030. That's okay. the goal. Um, I think you look forward to it as well. I Absolutely. look forward to it. Um, we're going to, to visit a couple of amazing companies. We're going to talk about electrification, about connection, about shared mobility, about... We, we, the last day we're going to, to see a couple of, of real Mars shots. I don't even call them moon shots. We're going even to see flying solutions. Um, I don't know whether they're ever going to happen, but I'm always, I'm always open for what's next. So yeah, I look forward to it as well. And um, yeah, see you in December. See you yeah. in December. Okay, Absolutely. thank you.